funding for this video was brought to you in part by Ana Luisa and by viewers like you. Thank you. What's up, punks? Today we're gonna begin a little readathon of sorts that I'm creating myself for myself because it is officially Women in Translation Month, which is 31 days to promoting women authors from all kinds of different countries. I have curated a little selection of seven books that I hope we will read across seven days, but no pressure, you know how it is here. I am just so excited for this reading week ahead of us because did you know that only 36% of books translated into English are from non-European countries? And also that less than 31% of translated books to English are written by women? I didn't, yikes. I think this is such a wonderful, crucial, and most importantly, fun challenge slash month slash project. So this week we'll be exclusively reading translated fiction written by women. Cannot express enough how jazzed I am and how grateful I am to experience stories from around the world. How cool is that? But before we dive into reading, let's hear it real quick from today's sponsor, Ana Luisa. As some of you may know, this year I became an Ana Luisa brand ambassador. I am so grateful for this opportunity to support a more eco-conscious brand whose mission statement is simple. High quality jewelry should not cost the planet. It is the month of August. So these are the final days of their summer sales. You can find sustainable jewelry online that's both water and carbon neutral, now at significantly lower prices. I am genuinely always wearing something from Ana Luisa. You can see a piece from them in I think every video since March or April. Their pieces go with everything. They make me feel so fancy. There's so much that I love about Ana Luisa. The first one being I've never received a piece of plastic from this company before. From their cotton pouches to their recyclable paper cards to their eco mailers, everything you receive from them is 100% recyclable. Also, they have a climate neutral certification. Also, 70% of their used materials are recycled. You can learn all about Ana Luisa's sustainability yourself by reading their public impact report on their website. It's public information, baby. Supporting sustainable practices is an essential no brainer to me, which is why I feel comfortable and confident working with Ana Luisa. Also, I was a customer of theirs long before we started working together and I was happy with my experience. Speaking of happy experiences, let's talk about the three pieces that I recently selected because smiles all around around. <laughs> The three that I selected today are in my ear holes right now. The first is their Bex mini hoops, which is a small beaded hoop that really just hug your lobe. They're on the tighter end. They're super light so they don't drag your ears down, which are great for if you have stretched ears like me. Above that hoop is their Julia hoop. These have some more weight to them. They're a bit thicker. And so just look at how they grab the light. So satisfying. And lastly, you know, I always save the piece that tickles me the most for last. These are their smiley studs. They are really giving me my 90s Lisa Frank-esque fantasy quite literally the happiest jewelry I own, the stud that smiles back. <laughs> Bringing all three of these pieces together decorates my ear in a very pleasing way. I'm so happy with these choices. So if you'd like to gift yourself or someone you love with something sparkly, you can head on over to their site to partake in Ana Luisa's summer sales. Thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Ana Luisa, let's talk. Translated books written by women. But let's go on the couch to talk books because it's cozier. Okay, okay. So as previously stated, we have seven books, six languages, but seven countries. Hoping to read all these. A uh, couple of them are on the super shorter side, but then we've got this guy. <laughs> Let's do a rapid fire overview of the TBR for this week. Starting with Paradise by Fernanda Melchor. Melchor is a Mexican author, so this is translated from Spanish. This book follows two misfit teenagers who sneak around and get drunk. They're in a luxury industrial housing complex. One of them is lonely, addicted to porn. The other one dreams about quitting his grueling job as a gardener. Paradise explores the explosive fragility of Mexican society, fractured by issues of race, class, and violence, and how the myths, desires, and hardships of teenagers can tear life apart at the seams. I've heard that this one is so sad. Despite it being as short as it is, it really upsets a lot of people. Ready to have my heart broken. Ready to learn. The next book is also translated from Spanish, but our author is Argentinian, and that is Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. I recently read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, which was such a twisted and unique way of depicting how dangerous it is to live in a farming community in Argentina. Little Eyes is a book that I've had on my radar for such a long time, and now that I know that I love Schweblin's writing, I'm even more excited for it. It's about a bunch of little stuffed toys that have webcams for eyes, question mark? What? So these are the only two that are translated from the same language, but they are from very different places. The next two are on the shorter side, and these are the two that are from European countries. The first one being, we had to remove this post by Hannah Bervoots. This author is from the Netherlands, and so this book is translated from Dutch. It follows a protagonist who gets a very odd job being a social media content moderator, which is one of the most traumatizing jobs that exists on the market today. There's a lot of hype for this one online. I'm very intrigued and a little frightened. The next book comes from France, and it is The Inseparables by Simone de Beauvoir. This one's translated from 
French, and it was published after Beauvoir's lifetime. It tells the story of the real life friendship that shaped one of the most important thinkers and feminists of the 20th century. It apparently has really strong female friendships. It's very short, but I think it's gonna be really beautiful. The next three are all Asian countries, starting with Sayaka Murata's newest release, Life Ceremony. If you didn't already know, Sayaka Murata's Convenience Store Woman is one of my favorite books. It sits on my favorite shelf. So I naturally pre-ordered this one and I'm so excited to read it. And this is a collection of short stories, which I hear dabble in cannibalism. I don't need to know much else. If it's by Murata, I will be reading it. Sayaka Murata lives in Japan, and so naturally this is translated from its original language, Japanese. Speaking of short story collections, we have Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. I hear that there are stories in here from sci-fi to magical realism to horror. I don't think I've heard a single negative thing about this book. Bora Chung is from South Korea, so this is translated from Korean. And last but not least, the biggest challenge of the week, as far as page numbers are concerned, I don't think it'll be a challenge as far as enjoying it is concerned, and that is Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri. Shri is from India, and so this book is translated from Hindi. It follows an 80 year old woman who slips into a deep depression after losing her husband, but then befriends a trans woman and they both go to Pakistan. It's historical fiction, so it's educational. It's also beautifully written. I have such high hopes for this one that I am including it in this stack of seven, despite its length. It is almost as long as all of the other ones combined. It's almost 800 pages, but she just sounds so good. So hopefully we get to all these books this week. But again, if not, it's fine. Set goals for yourself, but also be reasonable with your boundaries and your limitations. I'm gonna go outside and read in the park because that's what I do best. <laughs> Join me on this exciting reading week in reading translated women literature. Go! Good morning, crusty crew. Day two of Women in Translation reading month slash week for us because we don't know how to be chill. Speaking of not chill, Cursed Bunny. Excuse me? What? I cannot believe that I hesitated picking this up because I'm typically not an anthology girl. I'm not a big short story fan. I feel like every time I get invested into a story that it ends and I have to get all reinvested again, it's very disjointing and sometimes upsetting to me. But <laughs> Chung is doing such a good job. I read the first two stories, so I'm on page 50. I don't want to spoil anything, but what the heck? Twist. It. Messed up. Well done. I also started Tomb of Sand. Um, we're only that far in. So beautifully written. So different as well. Very unlike anything I've ever read. Probably because I've never read a book whose original language was Hindi. So even though I'm struggling a little bit, I really have to turn my thinking cap on to follow this one. But I'm still liking it. At the current moment, we are facing another heat wave. All right, clap if you think she should suffer. Ah. Taking it one day at a time. Taking it one moment at a time. Just trying my best. Eight in the morning, I've got my coffee. I'm gonna do some editing, then we're gonna read some more because that's what we signed up for, right? Yes. You might be thinking, oh my God, Allie, what a cool t-shirt. What the heck? Snails? Yes, snails. These are the summer snail t-shirts. I drew this myself inspired by my love for my snails and my recent autism diagnosis, which is why 10% of the proceeds are going to the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network. There's like about a week to pre-order them and then they're not available anymore. So hop on it if you want. Okay, I'm gonna edit. Bye. <laughs> I may or may not have just edited for the past 12 hours. Who's to say? Did she edit through her meals? Who's to say? It's not very self-care girl boss of me now, is it? No. So day two of seven translated books in seven days is basically complete. It is past eight o'clock. I got a text from mama. So jet lagged from Australia. You are, why? Cause it just came back from Australia. Anyway. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, we should have completed a book a day in order to reach this goal. However, this is what's making it seem a lot more scary than it is. I can easily read two or three of those other tiny little bad boys out there in a day. So, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sweaty. It's so warm. Ow. I'm done with today. <laughs> Morning. It's another hot day in air conditioned free Europe. Cheers. Happy Friday. It's Friday. We're gonna get so much reading done this weekend, I swear. Um, will she get a migraine? A mystery. I really thought I was gonna get one all day yesterday, but my body just let me edit for 12 hours, so thank you. Honey. 
You've got a big storm coming. So we're just gonna read if one strikes, one strikes. That's how it goes. I would like to get outside and absorb some vitamin D. Will she do that? Don't know, it's really hot already. <laughs> we're still reading Cursed Bunny and Tomb of Sand. I honestly didn't open either of these last night. Today the goal is to finish Cursed Bunny and make some serious progress in Tomb of Sand and then maybe even read like one of the little ones just to get get those numbers in. I'm sitting in front of the bookshelf however because I did get some book mail yesterday. When I say book mail, I mean books that I bought with my own money. I don't know how all these people be getting free books so let me know <laughs> the sequel to the song for the wild belt is here this one only just came out it's called a prayer for the crown shy my only complaint for the first one was that i wish there were more conversations between the monk and the robot but the monk and the robot already met everyone said that they talk a lot more in this one so i'm so excited it is taking every fiber of my being to not read this immediately so definitely something we'll read next week yeah I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The next book I got is thanks to so many different comments. It is The Magic Fish by Trung Lin Yugen. This is about a Vietnamese family who just recently immigrated to the United States. Our protagonist Tien's family is still learning English. I think he is as well and so he can't come out to them with his sexuality because not only does he not have the language but also cultural barriers from my understanding. Also he uses fairy tales as a language to communicate and to understand the world around him which is very relatable so. Oh my god the colors! Are you kidding me? Look each page is a different color. Look look look. So excited. So excited. Thank you for recommending that one to me. So that's that. Can't read either of those because we have goals. We have goals in mind. My brain is mashed potatoes from editing for so long yesterday. I'm sorry. That was not responsible. But sometimes that's showbiz, baby. Okay, let's read. Hello. I am so close to finishing Cursed Bunny. Look at so few pages left. I'm gonna be sad when it's over. It's so impressive. But anyway, I read outside. I got some vitamin D, got some fresh air. Healthy, responsible. We're getting back into the self-care. Speaking of self-care, made two grilled cheeses. Look at how pornographic these look. Are you kidding me? That's the sign of a good day right there. That's what that is. So I'm gonna munch. I'm gonna shower. She's sweaty. And then we're gonna finish this book. We have to. It's the law. <laughs> Finished reading Cursed Funny by Bora Chung. A lot of the times with anthologies is that there are a couple that hit and so many that miss. And I wouldn't say that any of these necessarily missed. There were only one or two that I was mildly less interested in than the ones that I was completely invested in. If you read this one, I would love to know which stories were your favorite. Mine were The Head, The Embodiment, Snare, and then The Reunion. But they were all thought provoking. And then the last one was just a super meaningful story about how trauma shapes your life. And it was a welcome change of pace. I think what was so satisfying about this one is that the marketing and the synopsis told you exactly what you're signing up for. This book said, hey, we've got some short stories that span across all genres. They critique capitalism. They critique the patriarchy. Enjoy. And it did exactly that very well as well. Very much enjoyed this one, obviously. Uh, really kicked off this Women in Translation reading vlog with a freaking bang. Am I right? Very satisfying. Very good. Couldn't recommend it enough. So now we're in bed. We're going to take our melatonin gummies, but I'll see you in the morning. So I had a really nice morning. <laughs> then as I was eating my breakfast, the migraine started. So we've pulled out the couch bed. All my plans have been thwarted. I've been getting a lot more migraines than usual. <sighs> oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Will you make me food? Again. <laughs> So we just lost about 10 hours, but we're out the other side for the most part. So I'm gonna try and read it slowly. We are this far into Tomb of Sand. It's definitely not as far as I would like to be ideally, but this week has been a little more chaotic than I hoped. <laughs> Between editing and migraines, it happens. Um, let's just take it easy.
stop screaming at me? <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Do I feed my breakfast on the floor? Whoa. Oh my gosh. Are you in the cameraman? Action. Good boy bringing it back. Good boy bring it back, has she? Where are you going? Oh my god. So this morning while I was at the gym, I started reading A Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. Hello. Ding. It's so good already. I'm on page 35. We have to talk books. We definitely have to talk books. But before we dive headfirst into reading reviews, we have some things to celebrate. First of all, as of today, Monday, August 15th, I have lived in Belgium for six years. Woo! Which is why we're on the couch bed. Lawrence and I used to make floor beds for all of our anniversaries and things, and we would get pizza or some kind of junk food and like play video games all day. So that's kind of what we're gonna do today. But now we have a couch bed. We're evolving. We're leveling up. So he's out now getting some vegan Burger King. I'm also gonna read some because we are a little bit behind, but I still believe in myself. It's only Monday. We have until Wednesday morning. This morning with coffee, I read Paradise by Fernanda Melchor. This is so very much not my thing. Such angry, hateful language, top to bottom. Understandably so. The circumstances were disastrous for our protagonist, but it's just a little bit much for me. And a lot of people said that this is really, really sad. I would not describe it as such. I would describe this more so as bleak. This was really, really bleak. But you know what was shockingly my thing? Tomb of Sand, baby. Look it. She read it. She read the whole thing. Ah! I was not expecting that. I have so, 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 so many thoughts on this one. I still have a lot to process. I have a novel worth of notes on my phone. This is definitely not a book that I'd recommend to everybody, but I was so impressed rest with it and also i'm just so grateful that it was translated because this was such a unique writing style this was such a unique little story despite it being quite difficult for me to follow said story i kind of just kicked back and got from it what i could and part of me thinks yeah this could have been edited down but another part of me is like absolutely not keep it all in throw it all in the soup slurp slurp you know <laughs> the themes about displacement the themes around borders the themes around friendship the translator's note at the end says something like a tale woven of many threads perfectly said that's exactly what this story is. It's not a blanket of all one shade. It's a little chaotic, but I strangely really, really liked it. It was good. And the fact that I read this one makes me feel so much less overwhelmed by what I have left to read. Like if I can read this in four days, we're fine. I've lived in Belgium six years. I finished the almost 800 page translated through Hindi novel. And we hit 25,000 subscribers on this channel as of last night. Terrifying, but thank you but yikes but thank you <laughs> i'm just so excited to see other people excited about the videos and excited about books and just excited about it all i love this corner of the internet so much and there's just something about this nook and cranny that we are all existing in that is just so special and kind and this place wouldn't be what it is without everybody's kindness everybody's collective kindness so thank you so much this is so cool um speaking of cool let's go over here we're moving we're moving the terrarium of my snails is looking a little bit sad every time i give them fresh wildlife they eat it like like that. So I'm gonna rejuvenate it. I got some plants from their natural habitat. I'm gonna spruce them up, clean them up. So then they have some fun new places to hide. They have some cool things to munch on, etc. So let's do that and then we'll celebrate our six years in Belgium. so good at masking. No one would ever realize I was autistic if I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh my god. It's so cute. Are you shitting me? Capitalism really popped off today, ladies. Good morning, crusty crew. Have you hydrated yet today? Get on that. I spent the morning finishing up the Patreon designs for September. Ah! <laughs> they are so cute. It's a little frog hiding under a leaf from the rain. Ah! 
Look at him. Are you kidding me? I was doing some general sketching, but just feeling uninspired. Although I do really like these worms. <laughs> and then I saw this TikTok of this little toad frog guy hiding under a leaf in the rain and inspiration struck. So if you sign up for the top tier of Patreon, you get all of the previous designs. They've definitely improved over the years. <laughs> and also the bookmarks for Lonely Castle in the Mirror in September are done as well. So cute. I'm so excited to read my favorite book with everybody. And then that's that. Boom. It's like 9.30 right now. Look at him on my phone. Ah, I can't get over it. Um, I have to run some errands today, but nothing opens until like 10 out here. So I've got some time to kill. So we got to do some reading. We're a little bit behind. I'm not worried about it. Wah, wah, sport mode. <laughs> I'm about halfway done with Little Eyes. This is good. This is interesting. This is like an episode of Black Mirror. I'm so intrigued. Each chapter is in a different country. Sometimes we revisit other characters and it just shows the many different ways that people use these little toys because this book is about kind of like Furbies, <laughs> but they're all different animals and they can move around your house. The animal has webcams and it has little eyeballs and you can control the animal in this other person's house. And it's kind of like a metaphor for your phone. It's kind of like a metaphor for the internet, but it's not spoon feeding and it's not cheesy. It's really interesting. It's saying a lot about human connections, the different ways that we can connect to one another. It's saying a lot about privacy and it's stressing me out a little bit. I think Samantha Shrubble might be a top tier author for me. I want to read everything that she's ever written. We've got like a little over hundred pages of this one. Then we're down to the final three books, but look at how small they are. It's fine. I've read more in a day. So I believe in myself. Let's just do it. Let's not waste any more time. I ran my errands. I also stopped at the thrift store. Let's talk about it. First of all, my booktube friend Kirsty has this sweater that has purple and orange on it. And every time she wears it, I'm like, that is the best fall combo I've ever seen in my life. And so I found this shirt. Yes, look at those colors. Fall, fall cute. You know how I feel about oversized button ups. Whoa. Then I have been hunting for over a year for the early 2000s denim tank top dress of my dreams. We found two. One of them was two euros. It's fine. I don't feel like putting her on, but look, this is the tighter option. Art teacher scandalous. Pockets. <laughs> but wait, you get the idea. Shut up. And then I found one that's a little baggier, a little bit longer. And there are little sailor dogs in love on it. You can't lose. Also, you could wear it open over things. Art teacher dreams. Art teacher dreams. And then last but not least is just this screw neck. Because I have this really cool Halloween sweater, but it's way too small for me. And so I thought I would cut off the patch on that sweater, sew it on this sweater, and then it fits. I love thrifting. This was the boost I needed. It's getting cloudy, it's getting cozy. We're gonna read all day. But first, let's make some pesto. I think I think I've shown you how to make vegan pesto before, but if you'd like a refresher, we can do that together as friends now. Okay. I fell asleep reading. Not because it's boring, just because she had COVID a month ago. Anyway, let's do this. Ah! I finished. This was damn good. What a thought provoking, unique slice of life this was. It really got you thinking about connection and community. It really got you thinking about moral ambiguity in such a short little book. What the heck? Incredible. I've now decided to pick up We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Bravutz. This is the book that's translated from Dutch. I heard that it's awful, <laughs> like terrifying, disgusting, excessive. So I'm going to read this one now so then I can end on Siaka Mirada's short stories and like a happy book about friendship. At least I'm assuming that it's a happy book about friendship. All I know is that our protagonist gets a job being a content moderator for social media, which is like one of the worst jobs ever. I watched a mini documentary on it once and the amount of therapy that people need after doing that job, let's be grossed out. <laughs> Uh, 
had a really, really, really bad health night last night. I haven't had a night like that in a long time. I maybe got two hours of sleep, so this morning we're not feeling very great. <laughs> Yesterday I did finish. We had to remove this post. I quite liked it. It wasn't as gross as I thought it would be. There were a couple of things that obviously the moderator saw that were not pleasant, but they didn't describe them in excess. It was more so like a list. I was really expecting pages and pages of just overly descriptive, repulsive things, and I'm really glad we didn't go there. Overall, I'm just really pleased with how much this said about how PTSD manifests in other people, the many ways that different people reach to cope. And it was more so about relationships and connections and trauma. I wasn't expecting it to be so character heavy. I thought it would just be gross, but it was quite good. And then I finished most of the inseparables last night before bed, before it struck TM. And I finished up the last like 40 pages this morning. I will share my feelings about all of the books more towards the end. I think I just need to have more of my morning. Got my fall berry oatmeal. The heat wave just broke last night. We got some rain. We could actually have a warm breakfast. <laughs> and I started reading Siaka Mirata's Life Ceremony. This is the last book of the seven women in translation books that we picked. So as long as we finish this this morning, we have devoured seven translated works in seven days, which is very satisfying for my little rat brain. I'm hoping that the protein and sugars of my oatmeal rejuvenate me and I will check back when I'm done. Exciting. I did it. <laughs> I read all seven books that I set out to read this week for Women in Translation Month. First of all, I need to show you what I'm working with here because... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Stop. Anyway, I thought it would not only be fun, but also equally necessary to do a quick reading check-in. So, the first book we read was Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. It's a collection of short stories ranging from all different genres. I'm genuinely so surprised at how much I liked this one. Like I said before, I'm not usually an anthology girly. I was just so intrigued by all of these. It's because of this that I will definitely be picking up anything else that Chung writes from here on out. So, thank you for giving this book so much hype, internet.com, because you're the reason I read it. Then, somehow, we made managed to read all of Tomb of Sand. I didn't get a lot of clips of this one because she was focused, okay? She was focused, she was busy. <laughs> this was an Indian story translated from Hindi. This was so unexpected. I did a few updates on Goodreads of like what page I was on and I put some of my favorite quotes on there, which honestly was so hard to choose. Every pink tab is a moment where I was like, oh, so beautiful. I love that our protagonist was an elderly woman. There are not enough stories about older people. And it just made me so grateful that this book was translated. It made me so grateful that this book exists did I understand everything? Of course not. Did I get lost sometimes? Certainly. There are a lot of question marks in my notes. Speaking of notes, this was one of my thoughts while reading this book. Often Tree would go off on eloquent tangents, disconnected from the point of the story, challenging a linear structure. Much like sitting down with your grandpa and he gets lost in his thoughts. Neither of you know what the plot is anymore, but you still hold on to each precious word. Very unlike anything else I've ever read. It is a challenge, but it is so beautiful. So that's that. The next book I read was Paradise by Fernando Melchor. This one is translated from Spanish and takes place in Mexico. It just wasn't really my thing. I thought it was a little bit excessive. I typically like to read about suffering. I typically like to read about morally great characters, life complications, things of the like. But there was just something about this one that was just a bit too much for me. Don't get me wrong, the writing in this one was very, very good. It was very wordy, but in a very impressive way. I loved how descriptive it was, despite not always appreciating what we were describing. So Melchor is a good writer, undeniably so, in my opinion at least. And the class themes in this one were also quite strong. It was very clear to me why the characters did what they did despite uh, me not wanting to read about those things. I especially appreciated the juxtaposition between the two teenage boys and their lives. Like I said before, so much hateful language consistently. We're in Polo's mind, the teenager who works at the complex, and his thoughts are very overwhelmingly hateful. Understandably so, again, but still. I would just have personally preferred to learn about the class systems in Mexico without going knowing where this book went. I just didn't want the only thing I said about this was like, I don't like it because my feelings about it are not the end all be all only thing that's important about this book. So that's that. Next I read Little Eyes. Magic Shrublin is an Argentinian author and so all of her works are translated from Spanish. So this one follows a bunch of little toys that have webcams in their eyes. You are either somebody who owns a toy and has the eyes watching you all the time or you are a keeper and you have the connection to the toy. There's only one connection per toy. I'm really disappointed that I put off reading this one for so long because so many people thought that, oh, there's so much lost potential with this book. I didn't feel that way at all. 
all. I don't need all my questions answered. This was just a slice of life. It showed me a bunch of different characters' perspectives on living this life with this toy, with this technological advancement. And I just thought it was so well done. This one made me want to delete my social media accounts. This one made me want to get a Nokia flip phone, which is what everyone said you had to remove this post would do. You had to remove this post by Hannah Bravoots. I was so afraid of this one because I recently read The Discomfort of Evening by Marika Lucas Reinveld, also a Dutch author. And the reason I DNF this one is because I am so done with authors using to be subversive. Oh, we're challenging expectations. We're doing gross things to children. I'm so over it. There are so many different ways to challenge the norm than to just create scenes that else can get off to. I'm not interested. I don't think that that is an artistic choice. I just think that that's a gross choice and I'm not interested. I DNF this one and a lot of people in my comments saying I'm from the Netherlands and this is just how Dutch authors write, I guess. I don't know if that's true. I just got a lot of comments that said that. So I was extra nervous to pick up this one because of what it said it was about being a social media content moderator. The possibilities are truly endless to where this could have gone. And I don't think Hannah Bravoots went too far. I really appreciated that we didn't really dig deep into much of the content that the people were moderating. It was more so about the relationships, their connections. I thought it was interesting and I thought it was well done and I loved the length of it. Yeah, I quite liked this one. I was quite impressed with it. I liked the way it was written. I liked our characters. Not in like a, they're perfect kind of way, but they were just real humans. Okay, The Inseparables by Simone de Beauvoir was the second to last book that I read. This one is from France. Simone was a French philosopher and this book was was uncovered after her death, so it was actually written in like the 50s. It's broken up into two parts. The first part, I genuinely was convinced that I'd be putting this on my favorite shelf. It was so beautifully written. I loved hearing about Sylvia's thoughts and her realizations and her feelings, and she was just such a profound little kid. But then as the girls got older, I don't know how to describe it, it just felt more cut and dry. It was a lot less about feelings and realizations and just more so events of what was happening in the day. And then their wealth became a lot more palatable, which you know is not my thing. But that's just to say why it's not a favorite. I do still think that this is one of my favorite books that I read in this stack. It was so poetic. I'm obsessed with their friendship. The fact that it's based off of Simone's actual connection with one of her friends, Zara, just fictionalized slightly, was very touching. I liked all of the youthful existentialism. This was really beautiful. This was really impressive. I'm so glad that they found this story of Beauvoir's and I'm so glad that it was translated and we were able to experience it. And then I just finished our seventh book, Siaka Murata's Life Ceremony. This is also a collection of short stories by the author that wrote one of my favorite books, Convenience Store woman. A lot of the same themes are in this one. We revisit this idea of wearing masks, of having to be different people for different situations. There were a lot of stories that were definitely a miss for me. At the end of the day, I wish that the first story about using human remains to make furniture and the actual story life ceremony about eating people, I wish that those two stories were merged into one world and we just got a full length book about those things, about that world and those people. It very much felt like Little Lies by Samantha Schweblin where you were just getting a slice of life of this extremely new way of living. I loved the commentary on how norms and traditions are ever changing and how things that we thought were normal like 30 years ago are very different now. This one was still quite good. And there you have it. Those are the seven books translated from around the world, written by women. It is all but normal for people from other countries to be reading popular American or European stories that were translated to their language, but it is very rare that it goes both ways. It has displayed on the Women in Translation Month website, so I would love to know what your favorite trans translated book is. Always looking for more books. So what book was your favorite that was from a country that wasn't your own? Love to hear why. I just love to talk about books. I genuinely add so many books that you guys comment down below onto my TBR. This is a community to talk about books. This is a place. So if you have any, please let me know. This was truly such a refreshing week. It really reignited my love for reading. Not that it was dying <laughs> by any means, but I needed a change of pace. And these stories just had such unique flavors, each and every one. And I'm so grateful to have all of them and to have read all of them. So yeah, friendly reminder that there are only a few days left to pre-order the summer snail t-shirts. 10% of the proceeds go to the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network. Support the channel, get something nice for yourself. Also, an extra special thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to be Earrings Twins, it'll all be linked down below. Partake in the summer sales if you feel so inclined. And of course, a never ending thank you to everyone on Patreon.com who make it possible for me to upload as often as I do. It is all because of you guys that I can say that creating things, making videos, editing videos, and reading books and drawing frogs is my job. So thank you so much. Endlessly grateful for you. I'm gonna go edit this video so you guys can watch it. And as always, thank you for clicking. Thank you for caring. Thank you for being nice. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.